Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is recording. What we're gonna do on the homework, it says section six. Technically what they did is they pulled some problems from I think like 6.1 and then like chapter four of another book. I don't know, I just called it chapter six because it's just one homework anyways. It's gonna be matrix solutions to linear systems. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, okay, should have moved this down. Uh, what we've seen before um, has been like a system of equations. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and write this one down. I've got three different equations. Uh, the first one's 4x plus 3y plus 5z equals 8. And then in the second equation, you notice there's not actually a y, right? The y variable, so they just leave it blank. Um, it's 9x plus 9z equals negative 8. And then my third equation is 4x plus 5y plus 2z equals negative 5. So what I'm going to show you is what it means to actually put something into an augmented matrix. Honestly, y'all, a handful of the problems on your homework, that's the only thing they want you to do is just put it into this augmented form, okay? Um, you hear me say on the video a lot, unfortunately, that's all they want you to do because like I love this, so like I want to solve the whole problem, you know? Um, the actual augmented matrix is going to look, is this my right pen? It's going to look like this. I didn't really line it up just right. But all we're going to do is write the coefficients and the constants. And so you're going to have four, three, five. And then there's a line right here where our equal sign is. And the constants are going to go on this right hand side. So we get eight. And then we have nine. Because there's no y, we're just going to get zero. And then nine, negative eight. And then four, five, two, negative five. Y'all literally just took the coefficients and the constants and just made them an array of numbers, right? Put them in like a matrix form. That's what you call an augmented matrix. Um, more specifically, I got too many papers here. Um, an augmented matrix, there's uh, no variables. Okay, it's just numbers, just your coefficients and your constants. Again, homework, handful, you'll see like a, a large, um, you know, large brackets with this is gonna be just like a straight bar, right? And there will be like all these blanks. They'll show you a matrix and they'll just want you to type in the coefficients and that's it. Okay, like it's really not a ton of work right there. And so an augmented matrix is gonna be whenever we don't have any variables. Okay, so what we're going to do for this section um, we're going to have a goal, right? We're going to start with a system of equations. The first step is going to be to put it in an augmented matrix. And our goal is to actually create this. So I'm going to have the same like uh, brackets with the bar right there. And I'm just going to go and fill it in and tell you what all these are, okay? Okay, so... What we want is one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So if you notice, I've got ones in my diagonal, correct? <clears throat> right here, what you have is X, Y, Z. This is quite literally saying that if you get your matrix in this row reduced echelon form, what you have are the values for your X, your Y, and your Z. It's gotta be in this exact same form, right? If there's a zero, it's gotta be a zero. If there's a one, there's gotta be a one. Can't be kind of like the form. It's gotta be that exact form, okay? And then, I didn't really plan on doing this, but I think I need to. Um, I don't even know if my red's alive. We'll see. So just to actually kind of define a few of these, um, so we go, it's row by column, right? Remember, like houses have columns and they stand upright like this. Those are gonna be your vertical, your rows are gonna be horizontal. This is row one, this is row two, this is row three, and I'm gonna write underneath. This would be column one, this would be column two, this would be column three, and technically that's column four. 
So I'm going to actually show you all these different row operations, which is what we do mathematically to the augmented matrix so that we have the ability to put it in row reduced echelon form. And whenever I do that, I'm actually going to say row one, row two, row three, whatever. And that's where those come from. Okay, Nick, please get off your phone. I feel like it's like an everyday thing. The process that we're going to do is called Gauss-Jordan elimination method. I don't even know why I left that much room there. I don't really need that much. But Gauss-Jordan elimination method, um, I'm just going to kind of write down a few words here. What we're going to do is use row operations to, um, I guess we could say we're going to change augmented matrix into row reduced echelon form. My pen doesn't want to write. Um, and I'm just going to RREF it. Right, so use an acronym. <sighs> okay, so we're going to use row operations and our goal is to get it into reduced row echelon form. Everybody paying attention? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do a little asterisk. I'm going to create a pivot point. And then zero out column. And then it's repeat. Those are the steps for Gauss Jordan elimination method. My pen doesn't want to write. Um, Okay, so a pivot point. These are pivot points. Your ones are your pivot points. If you notice that augmented matrix, where those ones should be, we don't have ones, right? So what we actually need to do is create a pivot point. You need to do what you need to mathematically to make that value turn into a one, and then you zero out that column. So once you turn this into a one, you zero out the column. And you turn this into a one, you zero out the column, so on and so forth. Honestly, all it's just sheer manipulation. Okay, it's seeing what you need and then creating that so you can do what you need to. Um, let me see. I guess that's really it for there. Now I'm going to go ahead and explain these row operations that we use to actually solve these problems. I'm not going to cover up anymore on this page. Okay. So the different row operations that we have. So for the first one, we could actually interchange, which I think an easier word would be switch the rows. And y'all just need to make sure, okay, like I read math. So whenever you write these row operations, if you don't write them correctly, I actually read them the way you wrote them, which is incorrect. Does that make sense? So the way these need to be written are the way that I'm gonna have them right here. The way you're gonna interchange or switch rows. For example, if we wanted to switch row one with row two, you would use a double arrow in between R sub one and R sub two. That tells me they're switching rows. <clears throat> if you notice that what you need to do is multiply a row by a constant, right? Say we needed to multiply row one by a constant. What you would do, is you would just multiply your constant to row one. This gives you a new row one. So that double arrow meant I'm literally switching them, right? Whatever position they're in now, like I'm changing them. And then that one arrow is telling me that I'm getting a new row one. And so you could also divide by a constant. Um, say we just do like row one divided by a constant. Now we get a new row one. I kind of ran out of room here a little bit, but we also have the ability to combine rows um, and that would, I mean, y'all, I'm putting the subscript one, but literally, I mean, it can be anything, however many rows you have. Okay, this is just like a really general example. 
Um, say we wanted to take row one and we wanted to combine it to row two, that would give me a new row two. Those are the words that I'm gonna say. These are the way you write it. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the math in just a second. Um, you could also multiply a row by a constant, then add it to another row. And then, okay, now you got a new row, okay? Okay, so the reason why I said I was gonna switch things up a little bit for my other class is I did an example like this in the last class first, and then we couldn't really finish it. And then I didn't have time to do the other ones. So I showed you all of that. What we're gonna do is actually work with some two by twos first. And then lastly, we'll do a larger example, okay? And then literally, I, I can't hear you. you um, and then literally I recorded 11 videos yesterday. Um, so all of the different steps and stuff have already been solved and like uploaded for y'all. Yes, okay. row one divided by a constant gives you a new row one. Make sure you aren't on your phone, you're gonna be marked as absent. Are you good, Colin? Can you just get, can you look at this in a second so I can go out? Okay, just these are really long problems. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve using Gauss Jordan and state whether or not it has one solution, the uh, system of equations has no solution, or if it has infinitely many solutions. So if we get to a row reduced echelon form, right, REF, and what we have is an ordered pair, my pair is really light. If we get to a row reduced echelon form and I can actually create an ordered pair from it, that means that I have one solution, okay? That's literally, I've got a value for X, I've got a value for Y, and what I would do is I would have the ability to just write those values. That's one solution. Ooh, where's my knee? And then we also have where, say we solve this system and what we end up getting is a contradiction. That would mean that there is no solution, okay? Um, something similar to this would be like, if it was to say X equals Y. And y'all, like, that's also very general, All right? If you do the math and you get three equals 13, three doesn't equal 13, that's a contradiction, right? X doesn't equal Y, that's what I'm saying. Like, they're just different values. If you get something like that, that means no solution. If we solve the, um, if we solve the equations, this doesn't really make sense, but hopefully this will. If we get that it's true for all values for X and Y, in other words, if one of our rows ends up giving us zero equals zero, then that means that we have infinitely many solutions. And this one's kind of long, but what you end up doing is you write it in set builder notation. And so that would actually be, um, it would say that for all X and Y such that, and then you would actually write, um, you would actually write the equation that didn't zero out. And we have an example of that and it'll make more sense, right? So I'm talking about, I've got multiple rows here. I'm doing these row operations. One of them turns into all zeros. So my answer is that I have infinitely many solutions such that for all X and Y, and then what you do is you write the original equation that didn't end up zeroing out. You know, like it just ends up being like a big, ugly kind of answer, honestly. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and do this example right here. So this is just a system of two equations. First step, even with the bigger ones and the smaller ones, it's put it into augmented matrix form, create your pivot point, and then zero out your column. And then shift over to your next column, create your pivot point, zero out your column, right? If it's a three by three, we'd do another shift, create a pivot point, zero out your column. It's very redundant, okay? So let's actually do this one right here. Um, if I write the augmented matrix one, one, two, then we have one, three, 10. 
All right, I didn't even bring, I don't have the answers or anything. I'm remembering a negative somewhere, but I guess not. Okay, so now this is gonna actually be like us applying that whole first page of what I was explaining, okay? Um, the only difference for these next three problems that we're gonna do is our row reduced echelon form for a two by two is one zero zero one. And that solves for our X and Y, right? Because a second ago I had three by three, that's why I had another diagonal. This one, that's all I have right there, okay? So augmented matrix, pivot zero out, pivot zero out, pivot zero out. Those are the steps, right? So I have an augmented matrix. What I need to do is I need to look to see where is my pivot point. It would be row one, column one, right? When I look at row one, column one, I already have a one. So all I need to do is just zero out this column, okay? And what I mean by that is mathematically, I'm gonna look, this is usually what I do. Um, I would usually put a square around what needs to be turned into a pivot point and then we would do the math, right? Because it's already there, I'm not gonna square it. There should be an example where I need to though, hopefully. Um, I do know that since I have my pivot point, now my goal is to turn that into a zero, right? So mathematically, if I look at that one, that circled, what could I add to a positive one that would give me a zero? A negative one, right? The reason why I want to create my pivot points first is so that I can actually take advantage of the fact that it's a one, multiply it by whatever I need to multiply it by, right? Because one times whatever, it's gonna be whatever I want it to be. And then my goal is to have like an additive inverse, add it to another row, that's gonna zero it out. Does that make sense? Okay, so I know I need a negative one right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a negative one and add it to this. The way you do that is negative row one plus row two gives you a new row two. This is where our new matrix is gonna go. Y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and go right here to do the math. When you do a three by three, you definitely need to go to the side. When you do a two by two, you, I would probably still go to the side, but um, I don't wanna just do it in my head. This is the row operation I'm doing, right? I'm just gonna kind of rewrite it to show that this is what I'm doing. I've got a row one, sorry, negative row one plus row two gives me a new row two. So I'm going to literally take negative value. Why did I do four? I'm sorry, I was used to doing a larger one. I've got three things here in row one, right? One, one, two. I'm gonna do a negative one, one, two. I'm gonna add to that. Do you see all, just a pattern. I'm writing everything down from here. Row two, my row two is one, three, 10. One, three, 10, it's going to give me, right? It's gonna equal my new row two. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you do negative one plus one, you get zero, which is great because that's the only reason why I'm doing this. <clears throat> if you do negative one plus three, signs are different. What you do is you subtract, keep the sign of the larger. Negative two plus 10, signs are different. You subtract, keep the sign of the larger. This, those values, that's my new row two. I noticed in my row operation, I said I was gonna get a new row two, right? I never said anything about my row one changing, correct? So I could just write my row, yeah, write my row one, which is one, one, two. New row two, zero, two, eight. Does that make sense? Second verse, same as the first, it's the way you solve these problems. We're gonna shift to the next column because this is already in this form. So now we're going to shift to column two. I know that I need to turn this two into a one, right? So this is usually where I would square with a dead marker. That's where I would square. So that tells me, okay, what am I doing here? What I'm doing is I'm trying to turn that into a pivot point so that I can use it, right? Sheer manipulation. I'm doing what I have to do to get to the answer um, of this problem. So Mathematically, how can a positive two be turned into a one? Divide it by two, yeah? So I'm gonna take row two, I'm gonna divide it by two and it's gonna give me a new row two, correct? 
you all this one, I'm not gonna go over to the side because I'm just dividing by two. Do you see here row one didn't change? Row two, I'm literally, I'm changing row two, but row one has not changed. So I'm just gonna write row one. So I've got one, one, two. Row two, zero divided by two is zero. Two divided by two is one, signs are the same, so it's positive. Eight divided by two is four, signs are the same, so it's positive. Do you see how I just created that pivot point? After you create a pivot point, you zero at the column. Okay, so I would look right here. Honestly, this problem hasn't been too hard because each time I'm like using a one to cancel a one, right? They won't always be like that. Um, I know if I'm trying to turn this into zero, I need to combine it with a negative one. I use my pivot point to create what I need. And because it's a one, all I need to do is just multiply it right by a negative. So I'm gonna do negative row two plus row one, and I'm gonna get a new row one. Um, I'm gonna come right here, y'all. Do you see how what I'm getting is a new row one? And I'm not changing my row two, so I can go ahead and write it. Zero, one, four. I'm messing with row two within this row operation, but I'm still keeping it the exact same. I'm just messing with it in this row operation so that I can cancel out what I need to. So let's do this math. Negative row two plus row one. Negative zero is zero plus one is one. Negative one is one plus one is zero. Negative four, I'm sorry, negative times four is a negative four combined with a positive two gives me a negative two. I have just now made this two by two matrix into row reduced echelon form. Because I have ones about my diagonal, this is actually literally saying, right? Cause this is represented of my X values. There's my Y values. This is saying that X equals negative two, Y equals four, which means I could write it as an ordered pair of negative two, four. That would have one solution. That makes sense, y'all? Clear as mud? I'm gonna have to go a lot faster on the other two, but I literally am just gonna get the answers down and we're at least gonna attempt to start the three by three because y'all need to know how to solve a three by three matrix. Okay, that makes sense? Yeah, you need to know how to solve one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do problem two. In problem three, like I said, I'm just gonna talk through them and solve them so that we can get to the three by three. Um, problem two, I have um, these two equations. I'm told to solve them using Gauss-Jordan. I listened to directions. It explicitly said Gauss-Jordan. I am using that method, no other method, right? I know that the first step is to turn it into an augmented matrix. I know that I need pivot points, right? So what I'm gonna do, I know that this is the spot for my pivot point, it's a negative two. The way you turn a negative two into a one is to divide it by negative two. So I'm actually gonna divide the whole row one by negative two. So I'm gonna do row one divided by negative two. That's gonna give me a new row one. And my row two is not changing. I'm gonna bring it down. Okay, so negative two divided by negative two is a positive one. Three divided by negative two is a negative three halves. Seven divided by negative two is a negative seven halves. And now my goal, since I have a pivot point, would be to zero out my column, right? So a second ago, I needed this to be a one. I turned it into a one. Now I need that to be a zero. And the only way I'm gonna turn a positive four into a zero mathematically is to combine it with a negative zero. So I'm gonna use that pivot point, turn it into a negative four, and then combine it with that positive four. So negative four times row one plus row two is gonna give me a new row two. Okay, so if you do negative four times one, you get negative four plus four, we get zero. And then if you do, I'm wondering if this is the one, it is. Um, just trust me, y'all. If you do negative four times a negative three halves and add to that a positive six, what you get is zero. 
just because I know that what it, which example this is, okay? If you do negative four times row one, right? Now I'm here, negative four times a negative seven halves plus 15, you get um, zero. Row one did not change. So if you look at my, um, this would be infinitely many solutions because I got a row of zeros, okay? And so what you would do is you would say that the answer is for all X and Y such that, and we're gonna actually write the original equation that didn't zero out. And it would be a negative two X plus three Y equals seven. Like that's your answer right there, okay? Okay, I'm gonna start on this other one. We have a two, negative eight, and an eight, three, negative 12, and a 12. First step is to always do um, the augmented matrix, create a pivot point, zero out, create a pivot point, zero out, right? My pivot point is gonna be right there, that row one, column one, which is a two. Mathematically, I need to divide two by two to get one, and you do it to the whole row. So we're gonna do row one divided by two is gonna give us a new row one. Y'all, the only row changing is one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write row two. <clears throat> this is what I'm doing is turning that into a one. So if you do two divided by two, you get one. Negative eight divided by two is gonna be a negative four. Eight divided by two is gonna be four, right? Created my pivot point. Now, need a zero out that column. That three needs to become a zero. So mathematically, the only way three is gonna become a zero is if you combine it with its additive inverse, which would be a negative three. Use your pivot point to like create that negative three and then add it to that row. So I'm gonna do negative three times row one, because I'm gonna use that one, and I'm gonna add that to row two. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me a new row two. Row one is not changing, so I'm just gonna go ahead and write it. And so let's do that math. Negative three times one is negative three. Negative three plus three is zero, okay? Negative three times negative four. Four times three is 12. Signs are the same, so it's a positive 12. Positive 12 minus 12 gives me zero. The negative three times this positive four is a negative 12 and then plus this other 12 gives me another zero. So I pulled two examples apparently, which have um, infinitely many solutions. If you get one though, y'all, I feel like one of them should have worked out. If you get one where you have solved the system of equations and you end up getting like, something like this, it should be very obvious that this is saying three equals 13 or something. And that's whenever it would be a contradiction, no solution. I'll look for a video. I know there's many of them. So does that make sense of the different types of solutions? You can make an ordered pair for one solution. A row of columns means infinitely many. And then um, if you get a contradiction, of course, that's no solution, okay? Okay, <laughs> now let's actually solve this one. I'm literally in my head right now wondering if I pulled the wrong examples. I thought I had one of each, but whatever. I guess I didn't. Steps are augmented matrix. Create pivot, zero out column. And you may not even have to create the pivot point where a pivot belongs. There could already be a one. And so what you would do is just zero out the column. Okay. So we need an augmented matrix.
And what that means is you just pull the coefficients and the constants. You do not write down any of the variables. I have one, three, four, three, four, five, two, seven, three, negative seven, two, eight, six, negative four. Okay, and then the next step was to create a pivot, right? That's kind of like an if needed statement. I know y'all, since this is a three by three, I need one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one to solve for my X, Y, and Z, correct? My ones are about my diagonal. So row one, column one is where I need a one. And right here in row one, column one, I already have a one, right? So now my only goal is to just zero out the column. So these are gonna be the two numbers that need to be zeroed out. And honestly, they're the exact same number. So it's gonna pretty much require the exact same row operation. Um, Time-wise, I don't want to not complete this like I did. I don't know if I will, but I'm gonna kind of solve this more along the lines of the way I would solve it instead of doing each row operation separately, okay? I do that in videos, tons of videos, hours worth of videos, okay? I'm gonna do this uh, more like I would do my own work. I'm gonna use that one to cancel out these twos and become zeros. So I know I need to do a negative two times row one plus row two. It's gonna give me a new row two. And I'm also gonna do a negative two times row one plus row three to give me a new row three. I'm gonna actually come right here and do this work. I'm literally just going to rewrite those rules again. Sometimes some people will do their work um, all underneath the matrix and then they'll do an arrow and like that'll be the new matrix and they'll do all the work here and they'll do an arrow and like that's good if I'm not having to like write super big to show y'all. You know what I mean? Like that actually almost makes more sense. Um, but I would recommend making sure that you do your steps because if not, the answer is wrong. Okay, again, y'all notice patterns, right? It just in math in general, it helps you. Um, I know that I'm multiplying a negative two times the entirety of row, row one, right? There's one, two, three, four values. So I'm gonna do negative two, negative two, negative two, negative two, right? My values are one, three, four, three. So I'm gonna multiply that to one, three, four, three, right? Then I'm gonna add row two, which is two, seven, three, negative seven. And these will give me my new row two. Does that make sense? Kind of started curving up there a little bit. Um, same difference going on over here. I know there are four columns. So I'm gonna multiply it to four different things. It's also row one. I notice row one here, one, three, four, three. Don't get me wrong. You could do these little equations individually, but personally, if there's a pattern and it's a puzzle, I'm gonna solve it that way. Times row three is two, eight, six, negative four. And these will give me my new row three. So, my mouth gets really dry. Uh, that first row operation, <clears throat> two times one is two, signs are different, so it's negative. <clears throat> negative two plus two is zero, which is great because literally that's why I did it, right? Okay, right here, I've got two times three is six, signs are different, so it's negative. A negative six and a positive seven gives you one. Two times four is eight, negative eight plus three, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative 13. This, that's gonna be my new row two. Let's go ahead and solve for my new row three, then I'll draw and we'll fill everything else up, fill everything else in, okay? Okay, so two times one, negative two plus two, zero. Negative six plus eight, signs are different, so we would subtract, it's sign of the larger, I get a positive two. Negative eight, six, it'll be a negative two. Negative six, negative four is gonna be a negative 10. This, these values, that's my new row three. So now let me go ahead and write my new matrix. 
y'all right here that told me I got a new row two and a new row three, right? Mathematically, I did not change row one. I can just write it the way it was, which is one, three, four, three. My row two, this row operation told me I got a new row two, arrow row sub two, got a new row two. And my new row two is right here. I could be in that math, which is zero, one, negative five, 13. Negative 13. And then my new row three is zero, two, negative two, negative 10. That makes sense, y'all? Okay, question. As far as my reduced row echelon form is concerned, I notice that row one, column one is a one, rest of the column is zeros. And then whenever I shift over here, right, these are my, this is my X column, this is my Y column, this is my Z column. My Y pivot point is row two, column two, and then row three, column three, right? It's gonna go in a diagonal. Once you get this and it matches this, all we do is shift, right? I've been working within column one, I've done what I needed to here. Now we're gonna shift to column two and look, row two, column two, I need a one for my pivot point. We already have a one, right? Because this is like an easier -ish example. Um, since we already have a one, now all we need to do is just zero out the column, right? Okay, so. I need to make the three a zero and I need to make the two a zero. So that means I need to add negative three here and I need to add negative two here. What I'm gonna do is multiply those values by this one and then add them to the, the rows I need, right? So we'll do negative three times row one plus row two. Nope, I said that backwards. Negative three times row two plus row one. It's gonna give us a new row one. And we're gonna do a negative two times row two plus row three to get a new row three. And then I'm literally gonna come right here and do that math because my paper does this. Um, three, row two, plus row one, new, row one, and negative two, row two, plus row three, new, row three. And yeah, y'all, if you wanted to just do your work here and write it here, um, just have your matrices going this way and having your work next to it, that's fine too. Um, okay, so I know there are four values, so I'm gonna write negative three, four times row two is zero, one, negative five, negative 13. So zero, one, negative five, negative 13. I'm gonna add to that row one, which is one, three, four, three. And then this will give me a new row one. And I'm gonna do negative two times row two, which is zero, one, negative five, negative 13. And I'm gonna add to that my row three, which is zero, two, negative two, negative 10. And this will give me my new row three. Okay. Three here, so I can go and write this. What row did not change? I'm really just really thirsty. I thought I'd ask y'all a question. I didn't have time to get a drink. I know nobody's gonna answer me, no one ever answers me. I know who knows though. Okay, right class, row two does not change because that's the one that we're actually using, right? That's the one that we're manipulating, you know, so to speak, so that we can zero out the column. So because row two doesn't change, I can just go and write it. You do not have to, this is what I do. And these are my two new rows that I'm trying to solve for right here. So negative three times zero, zero plus one, one. Three times one, <clears throat> three signs are different. So it's negative, a negative three combined with three gives you zero. And then if we do three times five, we get 15 signs are the same. So it's positive 15 plus four gives you 19. Three times 13 is 39 signs are the same. So it's a positive 39 plus three would give you 42. 
two times zero is zero. I don't even care what the signs are. Zero plus zero is zero. Two times one is two. Signs are different, so it's negative combined with a positive two. It's going to give you zero. And then um, two times five is 10. Signs are the same, so it's a positive 10. And then a negative two would give you a positive eight. Two times three is 26. Signs are the same, so it's a positive 26. Positive 26 minus 10, you subtract, keep the sign of the larger. So it should be a positive 16. You see how now I just created my new row one and my new row three? Let's fill those in. So I got one, zero, 1942. And zero zero eight sixteen. This making sense, y'all? Right, like super redundant. All right, same thing we did last time. Very, very, very easy, simple math here. No calculator needed, honestly. And then it's just a matter of like, okay, what was I doing? Like, what's my next step? Um, someone's at my house. Probably didn't know. Okay, y'all. I'm so excited. These are my favorite and actually it's pretty short. Okay, so look at column two. It's in the zero one zero form, which is my goal, right? So I'm done there. Done with the first column, done with the second column. Let's shift on over to the third column. I know that the third column, right, going from the top to the bottom needs to be zero zero one. I know that row three, column three needs to be a one. I need to create a pivot point there. Because it's an eight, what mathematically can I do to a positive eight, turn it into a one? Divide it by eight. What you do, right, you do to the whole row, okay? And y'all be okay, I'm not coming to the side and doing the math for that, okay? Hopefully, okay. So I will write though that what we're doing is row three divided by eight, it's gonna give us a new row three, right? I feel like my little make she's getting skinnier and skinnier. Um, look, row three is changing. Row one, row two, those aren't. Just write them. So I get one, zero, 19, 42, zero, one, negative five, negative 13. And then this is the row that's changing. This is the one we look at. Zero divided by eight is zero. Uh, I don't think I have great ideas. And life is like just okay. Zero. Zero divided by eight is zero. Zero divided by eight is one. Signs are the same, so it's positive. Eight divided by, sorry, 16 divided by eight is two. So I have successfully created my pivot point. Now my steps would be to zero out the column, correct? I need to turn those into zeros. Y'all, once those turn into zeros, you are completely done. And what's in this last column, that's your X, Y, and your Z, okay? And remember, y'all need to know how to solve these, right? Okay, so because this is a negative five, what I need to do is combine it with a positive five, okay? So I'm gonna actually multiply row three by a positive five and add it to row two, and that will actually give me what I need. So five times row three plus row two, give me a new row two. And I need to multiply row three. I need to multiply row three by negative 19, right? And add it to row one. So negative 19 times row three plus row one is gonna give me a new row one, row two and one change, row three doesn't, because look, it already tells me that Z is two, y'all. It's already in that form. This row three is already in the form. So if I do uh, five by row three plus this, zero times five is zero, zero plus zero is zero. Zero times five is zero, zero plus one is one. One times five is five, five plus negative five is zero. Uh, two times five is 10, it's a positive 10, positive 10, combined with a negative 13, signs are different. So you subtract with the sign of the larger and then I'm done, that's my new row two, right? For my row three, you do times row three, right here, I meant for my row one. Negative 19 times zero is zero, zero plus one is one. 
And then I'm gonna actually do it this way instead y'all. Zero times negative 19 is zero plus zero is zero. Do you notice how like they remain the same, right? Okay, that's what I think people should do. Okay, so if you do one times a negative 19, you get a negative 19. Negative 19 plus a positive 19 gives you zero, right? Now we do two times 19 to 38, negative 38. Negative 38 plus 42, 38, 39, 44, 42. So we're gonna get a positive four. So this is saying that I have an ordered triple of four, negative three, two. That's your answer. Math. Yeah, talk, talk to me. Okay, boom, freaking 11.49, y'all. Perfect, let me turn off the video. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm.